And there we go. It is five o'clock. My microphone's actually picking me up enough. I have to dial it back a little bit. And it is happy hour on Tuesday, which means I get to sit down with my amazing friend. Graybeard of Graybeard Stavard. And uh, we're here today to yabber, riff, joke around, talk about it's, uh, a meme. We're starting with a meme this time. So, or are we starting with what we did this week? I, okay. I'll let you decide, but I, at All some right. point I need to have a brag moment. So you can, okay. you can. All right. Well, I'll, I'll kick off, uh, the past week in gaming. Uh, so on, uh, on Thursday, we started our, uh, on indoor adventures channel. Uh, we started our masks game, and uh, my hero, Cody Johnson, is uh, searching for a good superhero name, so he, uh, it, it, it's a cute little bit, and I'm, I'm loving it. It's, it's a lot of fun, to. He announces who he is every time, and the other, the other people go, oh, that's such a bad name kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're all high school teens because it's masks, and we're all awkward, and it's all weird and high schooly and uh good times uh and then you know off stream grognard's saturday night uh space game it's getting more and more cheesy literally cheesy where they now the ship their spaceship has a ghost that is a captain of a ship that was named the land of lakes and he uh <laughs> They they decided his name was his his name was Captain Ches D Head, um, so he's Cheesehead basically, and so I gave him like you know a Uber kind of accent, so he Jedi ghosts appears to them and then talks like like from he's from the UP or from Wisconsin, eh? um, or Canadian, and uh, well, a little little Minnesota <laughs> tossed in there. Yep, yep. Don't you know? don't you know um yeah so the uh so that was uh on uh saturday sunday i did uh did my uh, my shtick with the griftlands uh we unlocked a new character um and that was pretty good we had a, a pretty good time with that then uh off stream played my once or twice a month game with uh, a batch of folks from the uk that are amazing uh our peers the guy who runs it he's a sound technician for career and uh he he always does it uh, such up uh does up such a nice job you know music fades in and sound effects are going and stuff so good times um and then that brings us to here uh, tuesday indeed mm. um i had um pick up at 6 30. um i kind of lucked out because i've been spending the whole week for my sunday night game which this is the, previously speaking of good or bad dm I mean, we can discuss if i'm good or not um i've been writing the game well here's here's the thing i've been told i'm bad mm. so let's okay. let's let that sit for a second all right I'll, I'll own it if i am um but i usually script the 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 story to follow five sessions so there's a very uh -huh. clear rising arc there's right. a conflict moment where the, the PCs all go, oh, crap, what do we do? Oh, and then the last session is the resolution where they go, oh, okay, we need to we need to solve the problem that we've been presented. Uh, so, for example, in the first game, it was uh, they got to a moment where they went, well, you know, the zombie lord has a point. Uh oh. <laughs> what, what? How do we want to resolve this in a way that's that's good for everyone and brings justice? Because we really can't side with the town, mm. but zombies. <laughs> um, and so but I. But <laughs> for this adventure, I didn't do that. I just kind of went, okay, here's the the scenario they're in, and I have to figure out how to get the PCs hooked on something. Mm. And six thirty. I start putting together a combat encounter in the sewers with um, desanguinated zombies mm -hmm. and threw in a quick NPC like, oh, hey, this would be kind of interesting if this happened. And then it's like, oh, now I have my first minor villain for the campaign. Ah. <laughs> and they and, and we start at seven. <laughs> Ooh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm firing up Zoom and still finishing up stat blocks over in my initiative tracker. Right, right. Which I, I I'm just gonna say, love the initiative tracker. You know, uh, oh, are yeah. you using the one in D and D Beyond? No. Oh, no. There's a built-in one in D and D Beyond. Oh my goodness, I total. I'm in love with that thing because really? you you can build your encounters. Yeah. And just you can put twelve zombies in. Mm-hmm. They're all there. They all have hit points. You click the hit points. You go up or down on their hit points. It calculates the initiative. Oh. It, you you can put in the players and then just roll automatically for all the monsters. It'll just roll for them. Okay. And and stuff. So yeah, if uh, if ever you want to try to build your encounters in there, it's I might. really easy. Even if you want to use your own guys and don't want to make them homebrew, you can just put their hit points and yep. their initiative score in there, and and then just use it like that i've been using yeah. a website called um improved initiative tracker oh yeah yeah i got and, a note for that yeah and it's it's it, i find it really easy to because I, I build my encounter in D D beyond mm-hmm. and then i transport it over to that um mm. because i find the interface is super easy for editing so mm. i can quickly throw together everything i want with copy and paste and everything is there um and it ha- has built-in dice rollers of its own too yeah, um, which is really cool because if the if you roll for damage, it holds the last roll in the um, clipboard. So when you click uh, on somebody's hit points, it automatically like defaults to that number. So if I tell Asteki, you just took eleven points of damage from that zombie clawing its way over your shield, yeah, it's, uh, it's holding the eleven. So when I click on his hit points, bam, it's automatically nice. It's really slick. Yeah, um, yeah, very cool. But I yeah, I pulled it together very much at the last minute. Um, and somehow I'm like, I think, I think I've got my hook mm. that's going to get my PCs in and get them into the main story arc as they go. Oh, they're, they're really fixated on the abandoned castle. They like, they really desperate <laughs> because they heard a rumor it was haunted. Right. Right. And, and, and they, they pushed on the rumor and every NPC has said the exact same thing about the rumors of the haunted castle. Yeah, it's not really haunted. That's what we tell the kids so they don't go up there and fall down three stories and impale themselves on an 800 year old spear. Right, right, right. Like, it's not really. There's rumors it's haunted, but we all know their rumors. And they're like, <laughs> we should investigate the rumors of the haunted castle. Like, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> no, because it's not really haunted. It's going to be the most anticlimactic thing we do in this game. <laughs> Well, we're going to search for secret doors. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. almost wondering if I should put secret doors in the abandoned castle just because the players are going to get pissed when they get up there and there's nothing going on. Well, and then they just lead to hallways with little circular rooms where once there was treasure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, do, do you think in a town where there literally is no law, no government, and it is entirely run by individual gangs who stake out three block areas? That there's yeah. any treasure to be had. Uh, the only thing you'll find there is another gang, maybe. D- oh. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Or or non or uh, demi humans that they've the gangs have hired to live there <laughs> in for an upcoming big attack. That's the only things you know that I can think of. Or a monster that has been eating children that go up there because they're told not to. I that's that's all I can say that that should you know. I almost wonder though now now that I'm thinking out loud, I feel like I need to have something with like people start talking about artifacts that their great great grandfather recovered from the old <laughs> castle. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, my grandfather used to go exploring in the old castle. It's pretty much pit clean, but he did find this silver spoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, <laughs> he, he he managed to wrestle it out of something called green ooze. So, you know, there's that going for us. <laughs> but so that, that was my big deep, my big gaming accomplishment was was mm-hmm. pulling that together at the last possible second. <laughs> and having a pretty good game with it. Um, and I'm still working on prepping up for my uh, the candle keep game. I'm getting more and more nervous that I'm going to be blindsided by it not being what I expect. Right, right, yeah. Because uh, what is the uh, delivery date on that? Uh, the 16th. Okay. So I'm going to get my hands on the copy midday on a Tuesday, and I'm running the first adventure the Wednesday evening, the following. 
Oh, man. So, All right. Well, I, I'll have 24 hours to read the entire first adventure, absorb it, and go, okay, I can do this. I can, I can do this. Um, and now, is that, is that a new group, and have they had their session zero and stuff yet? That's a new group. We're doing session zero next week, um, mm -hmm. and we are going to stream it, partially because the nice. backstories can be really fun to get into, and partially because mm -hmm. I kind of want to model session zero. Mm. Like a little mm -hmm. part of the the old the, the uh oh crap part of getting old is that you forget found it mm. the elder statesman dungeon master in me mm. feels it's mm -hmm. important to model good dungeon mastering <laughs> and um it took me a second to remember the, the term elder statesman <laughs> god I, I just always say that the train yep derailed that it's gone but <laughs> there's like cars piled up by the time we sort that out we might as well continue talking about something else um <laughs> yeah but I, I do want to kind of model like that session zero hmm. um just kind of you know, going through some quick like you know here's how we're going to discuss if we cross lines or not here's how we're going to discuss the veil um fade to blacks if it should come up i don't think it's going to in a mystery adventure in a dungeon that's designed to be wheelchair accessible yep 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 um but you never know <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you never know it's it's an interesting gag it's an eclectic group we've got so it's, it's gonna be a fun group to play with um that's one of the three women that I, i've been able to find none of the guys i know that play D, D are like oh yeah i can commit to another game they're all like no yeah oh, too busy too busy Eesh. i'm one of them <laughs> i hear you i hear you um but so that being the case um speaking of wheelchairs um just to tack on to previous conversations mm -hmm. hero mm -hmm. forge as i mentioned on discord Hero Forge now has wheelchairs. Yeah, I got to uh, one of the Twitter uh, individuals that, that I adore uh, put out a little thing today with the little trailer blurb for it, where they were like showing all the designs and different. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, long day at work. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah, sort of own all the designs and the different battles, and they, you know, like one is a a werewolf doing a wheelie in paladin oh, armor with a giant two-handed sword in one hand and you know flags and pennants coming off the bag i was like oh that's that's mace balls i love it that's and that's i mean it, it's one of those really neat um things that kind of piggybacks this again we've talked about before but mm -hmm. this this push to be more inclusive and provide more options to players mm -hmm. and just kind of go hey let's Let's let people do what they want to do with our game and not worry too much about the, the everything else's. Yep. Yeah. So it, it'll be neat to see going forward if, um, if Hero Forge puts in, you know, other things like walkers or, uh, crutches, uh, you know, stuff that, so you can have other, uh, representation as it were you know mm -hmm. um you know because i i know that uh my oldest house elf would would just be tickled if she could have like some kind of leg brace thing on her character you know like like she wears in real life uh she could make herself as a character or whatever that, that would, she'd just be tickled pink on that one so amen to that yep um so that covers that kind of, that gets us up to speed on the news and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we hit last week, we just had a great time riffing on Ravenloft. So mm -hmm. if you haven't heard that, you should go back and check it out. That was episode, uh, what number were we on? That was seven. I think so. I think so. He said going back and checking the archives to be sure he has the numbers right because he's getting old, he forgets what happens on a given day. That was, yeah, that was episode seven. We are at episode eight. Cool. We've been doing this for two months. Huzzah! Woo! Holy crap, and they haven't kicked us off yet. I know, I know. Well, you know, I've kept my feet below the table line, so. Um. <laughs> That's the key. That is totally the key. Um, but yeah, so last week we had this great conversation about the, the Ravenloft launch, which, again, another, like, not till May that we get to see any of the goodies. Mm -hmm. I'd almost rather they not tea stuff. <laughs> you know? Tell me, on a th tell me on a Friday that it's coming out on Tuesday. Yeah, I, even even a a month is is pushing it. So you know, maybe tease it a month out. 
but yeah, this is a little too long. I mean, yeah. we're at a month and a half, two months, right? May, yeah, and March, I'm, April, I'm, May. Yeah, too long. What what will be great if maybe the Sunday before it releases that they do release like the first adventure of Campbell Candlekeep for free. Yeah, like, here's a big teaser, guys. <laughs> Your yeah. big hook. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be kind of nice. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. But um, last week we were gonna talk about this meme that came up. Um, can I wonder if I can grab it to throw over here? I think I have a, I do. I have a Chrome grab. So let me let me throw the meme up here. Um, and we'll put it in, and we can read it off here for those that are for those that are following on the podcast. Now available on Apple Podcasts and anywhere you find fine podcasts. <laughs> Uh, we're in there now. So Spotify, Apple, um, Overcast has us now. That's the app I use for podcasting, uh, for listening, I should say. We are now listed there. So there's the uh, the meme. Uh, they are the DM. Their world, their rules. Their word overrides everything. Yes, this is a group activity. But they are the ones creating something for you. Never feel you can't talk to them. But if you feel a need to argue their decision, walk away. There are online resources, including paying for a DM. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can... Um... Smell and even taste the vehemence. The <laughs> there's, there's a little uh, a, a little uh, hurt GM there somewhere. <laughs> so somewhere somebody had a bad a bad session. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I don't. Know, maybe we shouldn't go down this road. C considering other conversations we've had off stream, and I don't want to. I don't mm -hmm. want to get into a debate because we are mostly family friendly. Mm -hmm. But I. I feel there's a little bit of that, that I was, I was, I was okay with like, okay, this is an interesting topic, but then the bitterness to me gets mm -hmm. kicked up. Like you could tell they just took the bottle of bitters and just dumped it into the mm. cocktail with that. <laughs> there are online resources, including paying for a DM. If yep. you don't like the way I perform when we go to bed at night, you're mm. welcome to hire yourself somebody else. Walk off. Um. <laughs> there are plenty of girls down over on the corner. They'll take your money. It's like, really? <laughs> we had to go there. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. It, you know, the, so like I said, what I'm hearing is I had a bad session <laughs> and he, this is how it is. I, I mean, I, I have literally, you know, done the, the, the griping with, older gms you know and and gms who who i've known for 20 plus years and it's it's just it's really interesting because nowadays the the gms who are, are coming up in the 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 hobby now they they don't they they just don't understand no uh <laughs> they don't do what we've it's, seen it's a di it's kind of a different world so a lot of them would be like i don't i don't understand this what why is there this 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 anger there well i i'm sure there are those those tables out there that are having these problems because there's plenty of people who have you know written articles and talked about the you know the this and uh kind of thing but it goes down to i i put out a few i put out like five tips for new new newbie-ish dms yesterday and one of them was you know talk and listen to your players <laughs> you know if if the expectations have been set up god yes beforehand in like a session zero and stuff you you really shouldn't run into these situations where it's you know or or it should be a comfortable enough situation to talk it through like you know i really i really don't want this or that to happen you know i i've been in games where 
you know, players have said to the GM, I do not want this NPC hurt or taken from us or, you know, touched in any way. This is, this is like a very personal NPC to me or whatever. Please leave them alone, Mm -hmm. you know? And if you're the GM and you say at that time, you say, okay, no then don't go back and don't go back and kill that D <laughs> that NPC. <God. laughs> well, and you know it's it's weird to 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 piggyback that. I my dander goes up when I'm I'm reading uh, people talking about their plans for their players, and mm. the frequent frequency frequency mm-hmm. with which I am okay. I am not used to bushmills. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm adjusting. I will now have more, and mm-hmm. perhaps that will help. Right, right. It's smooth out that. Well, I figured for March, it would make sense to shift to an Irish whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got some, it it punches back. Ah, nice. Uh, as as the Irish tend to. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, the frequency with which DMs will say, I'm making sure my players form a really good attachment to these NPCs so I can kill them. And it's like, and, and the one that really sticks in my brain, and I apologize if this person never stumbles onto the show for me calling it out this way, but he's trying to get his wife into playing D&D. So he's made her the captain of a pirate ship. Yeah. And he's, a, he's frustrated that she's not forming enough bonds with the crew. Yeah. Whom he intends to slaughter <laughs> to give her the yes. tragic backstory to motivate her to go off and do great adventures. I see. And it's like, I'm. <laughs> I just. We, okay, can we. Okay, we, you have a reluctant player mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who is hesitant to form relationships, but she has one with you, which means she has some insight. Do, is it possible maybe she's reluctant to form a relationship with these other characters because she knows what you're going to do to them? Right, right. Or had she, I mean, so it's a different thing altogether. If beforehand they had talked about it and it was, you know, you are you want this tragic backstory. Awesome. This is what's going to happen, you know, <laughs> and then proceeded from there. That That's one thing. And then because then you still have that tension and that stuff, because as the player, you're like, is, is this where he's going to kill all the crew? Oh, my God. Is this the moment? Okay. Ooh, that wasn't it. <sighs> you know, <laughs> the, you know the, the poor uh, uh, Swabby gets shot. He's got the torch and he stumbles. He's, he falls into the hatch where all the gunpowder is. You know, is this the end? And, and no, he well, falls into the bilge. Goes up. The, uh-huh, yep. <laughs> falls into the bilge and the torch goes out, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not this time that that's that's good tension and that's fun but then they know that that's the eventuality of this is going but if they're new they're reluctant and you're like i'm looking for that gotcha moment you know you avoid the gotcha moments <laughs> yeah and that's the thing that like i i like some surprises but i'll mm. one thing that got me in college i ran a game of werewolf the apocalypse mm-hmm. And um, for those not familiar, the the short form is all the werewolves are eco terrorists. I mean, that's oh, the woo. that's werewolf in a nutshell. You are doing crazy battle stuff in order to save the planet because it's not just the environment being destroyed by uh, corporations; it's actual evil that the corp is driving the corporations to destroy the planet. So you're fighting literal evil. Um, and so they were in the city, and they were they were tasked to investigate disappearances Hmm. and werewolves and werewolf next of kin were disappearing at an alarming rate from this one part of town. So they all went this, this big adventure and they were all digging here and they were following these leads and they were cutting deals with vampires and cutting deals with mages. And they were, (laughs) you know, at one point there was, they, they dealt with a changeling, Hmm. uh, a small court of changelings. The head of the of the changeling court was actually a puka. Oh, nice. Who was incapable of telling the truth. (laughs) 
without exert because <laughs> cool. that, that's the twist of a puka. Puka just they're, right, right. They're, they can't help it. They're always making things up. So she yeah. had to spend willpower every time she wanted to make a true statement. Yeah. Now, of course, I'm GMing the whole thing, but I still made a point of like, and there she would spend another willpower to tell you something that's accurate because mm-hmm. she'd have to force it out of herself. Um, and then it gets to the end. It turns out it was the nun who was running the homeless shelter that they had been using a bait as a base uh... who had cut a deal to basically keep everything they had and that what yeah. they built up to support uh, the people of the city and the homeless of the city and the, the other werewolves in the city to keep all of it in place at a cost of one or two people a month. Right. And in her right, calculus, right. that was an acceptable, it was right. tragic. But I had like players in tears at the end of that session. Like, I can't believe it was Sister Judy. I just, <laughs> I can't believe it was the nun Bonar. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that just, I'm sh- and I'm like, are, are you guys all kids? This, and, and, and I still remember one of my players looking at me through like just tears coming out. I was just, this is the best game ever. <laughs> exactly. And it's like exactly. that moment, like, did I cross the line? Did I go too far? Did I, did, did I break people? Okay, good. They still had fun. They're broken, but they had fun getting broken. That's a little messed up. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's like, you got to kind of know those lines with people. Yeah. And, and I had a, tools. I, I had a show producer stop the stream, like live stream. She was like, Woo, woo, time, time, let's take a break. And and then it was like, Are you okay? And I'm like, What? It's <laughs> it's acting. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a tragic moment, I, you know, type thing. Cause I had warned her beforehand that story wise we had set this this thing in motion and early earlier in the day I said I was like, Okay, Charlie know that no matter what happens in tonight's episode we love you and, and she was like she was like wait what <laughs> so yeah as this you know the this the romance fell apart and one person was sacrificing themselves for the rest of the people and all this and that you know like i said she was like whoa <laughs> let's take a break and walk away for a minute it was getting way heavy, but it's one of those that, you know, we've gone back uh, as the cast from that episode, that show, and had watch along parties mm. with people. And yeah, it never fails to make all of us just freaking cry, you know, it's, just, it's that kind of thing. And that's, that's, that's good story. That's great storytelling those aren't gotcha moments. Those aren't those adversarial, you know, I'm out to kill you kind of things that, uh, you know, that that were so prevalent in earlier editions and earlier gaming, the, just the way that people thought they were used to board games and, mm-hmm. you know, you win or lose board games. And I think one of the best, uh, the best statements ever that has now been used as a meme over and over again is you, you never win Dungeons and Dragons. You, you like play, you have fun, you survive. It, you don't win. There's no, there's no like end of the game. Like, woohoo, we're in the thing. There's the end of the adventure where woo, we're done. What's next, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, people will, will say that, you know, they come home and, their uh, significant other or whatever says to them, well, did you win? <laughs> yes. 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 I won. Yes. I definitely won. I, I won. My character didn't die. So hence, I guess that's winning. Um. <laughs> well, yeah. And I think part of the idea of like, I can't imagine in the last five years, gain, I haven't gained that much. Let's use 10. Gain into an argument with either, either having players get into an argument with me as the DM or feeling justified gain into an argument with a dm yeah the, the closest i've come to that is um when i was running the ravenloft one shot at yukon the player didn't like the way i built his pre-gen yeah he, he he argued in the sense of this is a terribly designed fifth level fighter <laughs> but that's the closest we got and i know i blew rules left and right yeah but yeah, it was yeah. it kept the game going and that's what mattered um i feel like I'm thinking about this this person who wrote this meme and this whole um if you want to argue with a DM's decision it feels like 
you already have had a breakdown. Mm. When you get to that spot where it's like, I don't like your decision and I need to now make this an argument. That feels like somewhere someone's not listening to somebody. Right. All right. Communication has broke down. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I want to say, you know, uh, I've never had at, even at conventions when I've run games, I've never had anyone, you know, like just argue, you know, just these, like, this is some bleep and bleep and bleep and I'm bleep you and I'm out, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I don't, I don't ever remember that though. I have been in games where people have done that where they've just been like, I'm done. And they've gotten up and walked away. Um, like, uh, uh, we were at a, a war game convention and this guy got hit hard. You know, it was a landing thing. It was like Iwo Jima kind of deal. And, you know, a big bunch of his, do his squads got like wiped out in the initial rush. And he was like, eh, slid away from the table done just walked away and <laughs> we were like well, what did you what did you think he was gonna happen this, this is Evo. <laughs> we're the marines landing on Evo. it's like 90 percent of us are going to die yeah <laughs> this is you know <laughs> let's do the battle of hastings <laughs> i i wonder <laughs> are the vikings gonna win this one um, <laughs> so <sighs> i'm thinking too I'm going back to this. This is a group activity. Mm -hmm. They're the ones creating something for you. And I feel like that may, that, that puts so much, there's so much to unpack in this meme. Mm -hmm. um, but that puts so much on the dungeon master as the heavy lifter. Mm -hmm. And almost like there's a, the, I, I, I'm picking up this hint of I'm unappreciated. Right. Right. Which Okay, so here's my theory. Take it and take it and tell me what you think. All right. It's too many hats at once. Because mm. there's the creator hat. The dungeon master, if you're not wearing a pre written adventure, the dungeon master has to write a story mm -hmm. of some kind. So that there's that hat. That's where most of the work, I think, personally, of dungeon mastering goes. It's the okay, who are they gonna interact with? What are their names? What are their motivations? What do they look like? Yada 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 yada. Um, and then there's the referee hat. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's like, like the generals, <laughs> they make the plan and then these colonels have to have to implement it. And then you get down to these captains and lieutenants who are, who are there at the table, <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, but it's like, I'm trying to figure out who, what this, what the argument was. Cause when it came to, when it comes to something like world building, there is a part of me that's like, you know what? If I tell you this world, if I if I tell you I want to run a game that's a low magic world, because mm -hmm. I'm burned out on all the high magic stuff, and I say that's just the game I'm looking to run, and you're like, well, I that's stupid. I should be allowed to do everything in the rulebook. Well, yeah, but it's a low magic world. You're going to work a little hard. You know, you're not going to have full access to every spell you want. We're going to have to come up with interesting ways for you to get your spell book filled in, and then you yeah. want to argue about it. It's like, well, that's. I'm told you this is kind of like a condition of playing at my table. This is the game I'm working to go. I mean, do you want to run something on off nights? How do we work around this? Which is different than like arguing over a rules call. Right. And, and to that specifically, that, that either didn't happen. They didn't have a good session zero. They didn't have a good setup. And then that's where, that's where the, the communication broke down and the person or the person went, on either GM part or player part, one of them went, oh, you'll be fine. And then they got into it and they weren't fine. <laughs> they, they really stuck with the, I'm going to be, I'm going to be throwing fireballs and lightning bolts and teleporting everywhere. And, and then DMs like, uh, no, third level magic doesn't exist in this world. Well, I don't want to play anymore. Um, <laughs> or the GM's like, 
well, you can't do that. Well, that's just stupid, which is then the DM suffering from my precious story mode is like, you're, he's calling me stupid. No, no, I told you in the beginning, this wasn't, that's gotta be that kind of, you know, obviously the communication had broken down. <laughs> There was a disconnect. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. Mismatched expectations are the biggest one. Have you seen Gamers 2 Darkness Rising? Yes. Yes, yes the yes. whole thing with Cass, and I'm going to be an elven monk. Yes. You can't be a monk. This is a a a, a human-focused medieval setting. There are no monks. Mm -hmm. It's in the rule book. I can be a monk. And And the whole, like, and I'm an elf. No, you're not. Uh, it's like that's just an ongoing war of like but and I on the one hand I can see a certain amount of look these are the rules that this is kind of like the thing I've put together if you don't like it maybe we should talk other options for you or maybe or, you should trust me and see if we can make it work and see if we can have some fun anyways or maybe you're at the wrong table hmm. you know I, I it I've been having so huh. When I entered online gaming, it was really interesting for me because I had I had moved like every six months or whatever from the time I was like nine years old. But when you as I was going along, when you got a crew of, game, of gamers, you were like, this is our table and we're the players. And this is uh, yeah, this is our uh, we might as well get tattoos and you know ride motorcycles together it was like you know it was like a biker gang of, of rider of dice die rollers. things yep yep die as in dice um so yeah the it was just a different mentality and so it, it it was okay i'm part of the crew now and and in this day and age it's not like that it's it's literally it's literally who's going to be at the table okay you can't make wednesday nights well we're gonna have to you know we'll pull someone else in or you know uh or we'll try to make the schedule work or we're only going to play once a month because you four people can only play once a month you know um scheduling and stuff is just really different and the 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 societal expect the gamer expectations are a lot different you know, uh, nowadays you you don't just take whoever's there or whoever is your friends and play. You don't have to. You don't have to play with just people who are your friends. You can literally get online and play with, you know, someone in Australia, someone in Japan, someone on the West Coast and someone in Antarctica. <laughs> You know, as long as you can all agree on a time and play, I mean, none of that other stuff matters. You know, that that gang mentality of you, you know, you are at the table because you are my friend in real life, you know. Um, yeah, I, I just think that there's a lot more flexibility in in who can play and how often you can play. Um nowadays well, i know i know if i was playing at a table i i wouldn't be playing three or four games a week there's no way there's no way in real life the, to get people at a table that often well and part of that too is i think the more we play online to piggyback that thought is the we underestimate the inconvenience of going to a game yeah while i also think we undervalue the importance of periodically going to the game right 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 like i don't know if i would i mean i i don't think i could do three games a week if i had to travel much past my house <laughs> i mean if we were all in the same subdivision like a bunch of us dads got together and said we're going to play three nights a week at dad's D D. Mm -hmm. oh i could totally do that whose house is it this the, whose house is it today? well mondays we're over at chris's house oh. all right thursdays we're over at rob's house like <laughs> i could dinner do that. and Dinner ends at seven, seven thirty. We're in chairs by eight. We play till ten or eleven. And then go to bed. And <laughs> walk across the street and go. Yeah. Because, because that's what that's what it's like online. I mm -hmm. mean, there were guys who I was friends with in in my town who 
we could it was hard to get together once or twice a year to play a game and when when things started being online it was just like okay <laughs> you know we're playing every sunday or whatever every monday you know blam 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 and and we played more than than we had in 10 years prior you know well and that's so. that was part of my calculus on the kindle keep games going to wednesday nights mm. is i don't know if once we get to when you know when the pandemic is over are people still going to want to dedicate a night of the week mm. to a D D game and i feel like a week night far more right. likely to say oh on wednesdays i have my D D game it's two hours we do it after dinner yeah. that we are i play D D every saturday night right like that's just a that's a tough commitment once things start to ease into normal i think my right. sunday night game will probably keep going because i think sunday nights unless your family has a set sundays are family nights it's right. a little easier to maintain that in perpetuity yeah because but, there's going to be a concert or there's going to be you know nana's birthday or we're gone this weekend to cancun or whatever um yeah well and it know. gets those small that's another thing i like about, about the small groups it's a lot easier to say oh someone had a conflict okay we're off yep but there's only like so many people that can have conflicts you're unlikely to get conflicts back to back weeks right 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 so but i do think like not have, thinking about like if I were to play over at the local, there are two local game shops that could have regular D and D events. And both of them are like, you know, 25, 30 minutes to drive mm. there. So that's an hour extra right. on an evening to play D and D. Yeah. And, and that's like, it's not terrible, but it's part of the calculus. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's a factor that we, we, we don't appreciate when it comes to the ease with which we can get back to a game table. Right. Ne never mind yeah. distances. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I hadn't even thought about that. That once things roll back around, I mean, I I don't think <laughs> I don't think that my my current space game, my grognard game, I don't know if it'll come back to the house at this point because because they were so opposed to it, but now that they're doing it, it it's so much easier for us to just click a button five o'clock on saturday by eight thirty nine o'clock we're already you know we're already done and talking you know politic this and you know did you see this show and all that by nine we're we're, we're watching tv with the uh, significant other you know yeah. so yeah i don't know if it'll happen because you know like you just said that's like an hour or more of driving sometimes to get to someone's house to play the game I wouldn't mind when things do start to open back up again. I wouldn't mind trying to get maybe a third game going with the understanding that we meet once a month in person mm -hmm. and the other ones are done virtually. Right. And I'd be even happy to say wherever we go, let's make sure we can, you know, someone, whoever, wherever we meet in person has good Wi-Fi, so we, right. can, keep, we can keep streaming them because God, it's fun to stream them. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's just such a different thing when you're streaming your game table than when you're streaming your Zoom call. Right, 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 right. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. Ooh, <laughs> I've grown so used to, so used to uh, individual cameras and everybody at their house that I even have a hard time. The games that are out there that are highly produced and people are at the same table, like. I know I'm gonna. Yeah, I might as well get my. I'll get my shield now. Uh, like you know, Critical Role, <laughs> where they're all at the same table. I I find it harder to watch than when people are on camera. Really? Yeah, yeah. Those highly produced shows where they're at the table are are more more con convoluted for me than when mm. there's five people each on an individual screen it, it's just i don't know something about it something about it that i i enjoy the i enjoy the everyone on their own camera uh, the better well kind of i think it breaks i mean i think guessing where your brain might be with it breaks up the visual more like you're mm -hmm. focused on a frame like a mini tv mm -hmm. whereas when they're all at the table you're trying to watch a table of people play a game so you're mm -hmm. you're visually looking for a lot of cues because they're looking for a lot of cues Right, right, so, right. And one one guy is doing something over here with a pen, and I, I'm like, 
So, well, no, I want to, what, what's he doing with that pen? What's he writing? <laughs> and why is she sorting her dice? Is there, have, there are some of them going to dice jail? Yeah. <sighs> I think it's, it's the difference in input that, and yeah. then the, the talking over each other and talking all at the same time is so much more prevalent when you're mm -hmm. at a table than when you're on camera. It, 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 it's interesting to me. Which is to me a little weird because I feel like in many ways that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> and, and hear me out though. It's okay. organic. Mm. Like the thing that the hardest thing with me when we tried to play over zoom, right when this all started was everyone would start to talk over each other and the usual like visual cues of, Oh, this person's saying something more significant than I am. I'm going to, I'm going to hold back for a moment gets lost in zoom because there's that, there's that half second delay mm. or the 10th of a second delay before the other person, you know, as the computer catches up with you doing this and they go, Oh, I can see yeah. it's, they're the one speaking. I'm looking for visual cues. Oh, well they're making real conversation. I'm going to stop now. It's harder to do it on a zoom call. Mm. Whereas in person you're like, I can, I'm reading the situation better. And I was like, okay, we had that moment of argument and now I'm going to back out of it politely because obviously it's, it's your, I'm just going to stay in this because I'm dedicated to this. Mm. It definitely has a different verbal dynamic. Yeah. Which is all mm. again, why my D&D groups online are small. <laughs> like <laughs> I want to minimize how often these two people talk and these two people talk and they can't all, all four can't do it at once. Right. But they could at the table. Yeah. 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 Hmm. At the table, two people can engage me while these two people have a conversation and five people are engaged. You can't right. do that on Zoom. Right. Yeah. I think that it's uh, in that case, a lot of times too, it, it, c streaming compared to not streaming is mm. different also because if you're streaming when you're not in the scene you're looking at chat or you've got another chat window open for the game mm -hmm. you know and so the, there's a game chat and another chat and so you've got outlets for that kind of thing when you're streaming where and i've noticed on my saturday night uh all of a sudden you know you're we're in the middle of a scene and all of a sudden on the discord over here pops up you know someone posting a uh, a Muppets meme or you know, something and you're like uh, okay don't look at that I can't look at you know like like you know if you put lawyer cat up over here oh, on my discord I, I'm going to grind to a halt and, and look at lawyer cat <laughs> wow. so the game screeches uh, did we make it all the way through that meme was um, that the last one or did we have we not got there yet which meme the, the meme that we oh, were the just D &D looking meme? at. We've been bouncing yeah. all over it. Oh, 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 okay. I don't know. Are we done with it yet? I feel like there's I, so much more still here well, to talk about. Well, there's the the, the whole... Um, I'm just looking at the clock here. Uh, the, um, the, the last line uh, 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 about the paying for a DM. Mm -hmm. the, the, again, the bitterness and the... I think the... All I can say is it's the, uh, oh, wait, before we get there, that's what I was going to say about like one of the last ones was the, um, the, you know, we were talking about being on rails or talking about, uh, you know, well, it, they do so much for you, you know, they, mm. and, and you do write a story, but you, you have to accept as a DM no story's gonna con you know survive contact with the players <laughs> you know if if they decide there's no way in hell i'm going up to that that old castle <laughs> you know and, and you're like okay you just have to go well then the vampire lord raises the zombies and then the zombies attack the town <laughs> you know you just have to you you have to go with the the story because i cannot tell you how many times back in the old days we would get to the table and my poor friend who would you know make these amazing maps and you know he 
he made a journal that he that he wrote pieces in and then tore pages and then he spilled tea on it to brown the paper and you know there was a journal for us and, and all that and the the people playing were like eh, whatever Meh. <laughs> you know? Ouch. The, the, the elven goddess comes to you and says you must plant these acorns in the grove and, <laughs> and they're like you know six sessions later they're like yeah i i have these acorns what were we supposed to do with these <laughs> you know i mean while the that, orc that... in the back has been munching on them <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> just uh, acorns roasting over an open fire <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah so it it's one of those things where i think that's part of that that vehemence and that 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 bitterness the all the the half bottle of bitters that get poured in there is probably my story was supposed to go like this <laughs> and and obviously it didn't <laughs> well what, what's also interesting to me is i have to wonder too it's like it's it feels so, so much like it's tied to that you should be paying me for what i'm doing for you right. and that's like I mean, I get that sometimes when we get together randomly online, we, we throw out feelers and say, hey, look, I've got a seat at my table. We're going to do this campaign. It should take about six months. We're looking for a once a week commitment. Who's in? That you're not guaranteed to be my friend through this. We should be friendly with each other, but we're, we're here to, to have a shared positive experience. I just I have to wonder, though, too, like to what extent anyone who would throw that out there thinks that even paid DMs are going in with the attitude of, well, I'm just here to serve the players. They're paying me to provide. I mean, paid DMs are still right. going to say, you know, this is kind of how the game gets that I run the games and, you know, I'm right. willing to work with you and negotiate with you. But it's, you know, I think if you, it's a weird thought to think I'm going to pay you to run a game for me and I will tell you everything about how the game should be run and everything I expect you to do. And if we disagree about a rule, you're going to listen to me because I'm writing your checks. Right. 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 Yeah. It, 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 it's, it, it's us calling up J.R.R. Martin and going, hey, put down the nachos and write the last book. You know, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It no. does not work that way. It's, it's a creative endeavor. Now, at the same time, if I was paying a DM and I came to the table and I could tell that they weren't ready, they didn't prep and they were just, you know, mon you know, you know, winged monkeys were flying out of their butt to, for an adventure. I would try to roll with it at the table and try still have a good time because that's what you've slotted that time for. And, and I would even try to prop the other players up or even help prop up the DM and get through the session. But I would definitely be like, hey, uh, after session in some email, hey, were you off? Was something happening at home? Should we have called off? You know, or, or were you just not freaking ready? <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're a far kinder man than me. Of <laughs> um, course, I'm the guy. We were out for a date, a rare date. And there mm -hmm. were these three girls in the theater who were sitting down in front of us. And mm -hmm. all through the previews, they were full on, full volume, talking, laughing, and giggling. Mm -hmm. And the lights went down for the main show. I don't remember what we went there to see, but the lights went down for the main feature, and they didn't stop. Mm -hmm. And I actually got up and went down and said, you know, young ladies, I, I hate to do this, but I've spent $40 on a babysitter for tonight. I've already put $50 in for dinner tonight. You will quiet down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or I will yeah. get a manager and you will not see how this movie ends. Yeah. And then I went back to my seat and I got, you know, six glaring eyeballs on my back and I gave exactly zero bothers. Right. Um, so I, th I think in your situation there, I think I might actually stop the game to go, look, dude, maybe we should comp this week. Mm -hmm. Let you feel better about things. You go do your thing. But we had an expectation. Let's just stop now before anyone's feelings get hurt. Right. Come back next week. You know, if, if you're really tight on, if you really needed the money from tonight, we can talk about something that maybe double up in the future. Right. You know, do a exactly. double session, pay a double then. But like, but I also look at it too. Like if I'm paying you to participate in this, I kind of want to feel like I'm getting 
some bang for the buck. Right. But I'm also a guy who's like, I still, the only time I can see myself taking money as a DM is if it's through like a bar or a pub Mm. or a game store where it's like, we're paying you to be here to put on a game. Yeah. I would feel so weird taking money from players. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that 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 leads into you know running games at conventions mm-hmm. you know and sometimes you might not get paid but you get you know i technically you do because you get like free admission mm-hmm. you get maybe sometimes you get swag t-shirts or whatnot sometimes you get like hotel rooms mm-hmm. and and things and so i guess yeah i cannot imagine any of all the times that that i've gone to a table at Gen Con and sat down and then the GM never shows. <laughs> that happens? Tell you. Oh, it happens. Oh. It happens. You know, you're like, I paid, you know, eight bucks for this, you know, this two hours of session or whatever. And they don't show there was, uh, well, and at the same time in that, uh, as an example, uh, the last Gen Con or the one before I went to, I sat down to play a game and it was just me sitting there and the GM and his wife and the wife was just there doing crochet or something. And we're sitting there and we looked over and there was a table next to us where two kids were sitting, uh, and the GM didn't show for them. None of our players showed. Their GM didn't show. And so the, the GM at our table is like, well, were you guys here to play? And blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, you want to try this game? And, and they were like, eh. and I'm like, you know, because I wanted to play. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I've played before and you know la 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 and then he asked his wife his wife was like sure i'll play so he he pulled pulled the the you know the literal stuff out of the fire otherwise me and him would have probably sat there for at least an hour mm-hmm. yammering about you know i love this game and this game's so good nah, 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 nah. and i would have felt bad for him because again if he was getting eight bucks a head and there were supposed to be six heads there you know he was supposed to make eight, 50 bucks or so to you know for that for that night or for that game um anyway so we had a great time and we introduced these these younger folks to this game and they had a <laughs> freaking blast well that's good that, yeah. that worked out well yeah um i almost but it doesn't that, always <laughs> i almost said it happened at, at uconn with my ravenloft game that i i mean i i ran two rpgs at uconn i ran kids on bikes which was a decent amount of prep but not crazy amounts um, you know, I had kind of an outline they were going to follow and I kind of hit them through these, these benchmarks for the story and they, they did a neat job playing it, playing it up. Um, and then my Ravenloft game where I took the original, you know, I six and shrink it down to a four hour, right? four hour. I, I took the entire module and made it four hours. Nice. I had all the major story beats. We mm-hmm. started off in Barovia after right. we buried the Burgomaster. Ah, like, so we, we jumped <laughs> right to that moment. Where it's like, okay, you've just buried the Burgomaster. Now you have to go up to the castle. Um, because I wanted to, like, get... No, right. there, there is no, like, let's debate. It's like, no, no, no. You are here. You are committed. She's coming with you. Um, and I had all six of my slots taken. Mm. Five of them were all in the same group. Mm. One guy shows up 15 minutes early. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. we're This is going to be great. It's going to be great. It sounds like we got this great group coming. It's going to be the, the rest of the party. And then the rest of the party didn't show. Oh, 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 ouch. And it just so happened that two guys who had wandered by while we were playing Fury of Dracula earlier yeah. that day. Yeah, yeah. And I I talked up, like, I'm big on old school, va- not old, old school vampires, but kind of the, the 80s vampire. Right. Um, you should come by the D&D game tonight. If we don't have any cancellations, we can get you in. And sure enough, they came by like half an hour after start time. And I'm like, if you want in, I got seats. Right, and we ran with three. Right, and then we had another guy pop in. He's like, "Do you do you really have an open? Because I had the cone out. Mm-hmm. Do you really have an open seat for Dungeons and Dragons? Flip, flip, right. flip. Ravenloft. And I'm like, "Yes, we do." <laughs> and this is where we're at. Here's your character. Yep. 
<laughs> yep. And I don't even remember how we, I think we added him in as mm -hmm. a, um, well, the party didn't have a fighter. Mm. And the, the running gag for the first hour was that he had died horribly. <laughs> and every time we remembered their lack of fighter, because someone would say, you know, it's a lot easier if we had a fighter. Oh, yeah, that's right. He died horribly. Yeah, there was that weird rhino. And next time, <laughs> yeah, we told him not to go in that green slime. Yeah. And they were like, guess what? He's back. You get up into the carriage and there he is sitting. And you're like, oh, Strahd brought back our fighter. This does not bode well for us. And we rolled with it. But yeah, I totally hear you on that no show thing. It's just like, mm -hmm. oh, God. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, uh, uh, one of the my favorite games ever was I was running a beginner game for uh, Dungeon World. Hmm. Like, I mean, literally in the title, beginners, you know, beginners wanted never played dungeon world blam here's your chance you know kind of thing i ended up with two guys and we just had a blast with it because it was totally focused on just two characters and you know it was go and it's so uh the way you're supposed to play your first adventure in dungeon world is literally so what are what's our adventure today as the gm uh what's a location oh the crypt of uh indomitable snowmen okay great and that's where at what's the country's name you know <laughs> and you just you just build the story as you go kind of deal and and it was just a, a utterly amazing and like i said it was just two people and I, I didn't care because because it worked well. It would be a totally different thing if you were playing, you know, uh, we're 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 doing the Helm's Deep battle. We've got twelve, you know, ten thousand orc figures to move in the <laughs> mm -hmm. in this in this battle. And so yeah, uh, mass combat never works in RPGs. That's a whole different debate. Mm -hmm. I've never liked any every system that's tried to come up with some rules for mass combat. I've always kind of looked at it and gone, eh, maybe. Yeah. So, but but we'll, yeah, we'll have to pin that one and, and talk about it sometime. Yeah. So. Okay. So I'm thinking about the the person who made this meme. Coming mm -hmm. back to our meme of of discussion. What's what's our advice? This person mm -hmm. clearly needs advice. All right, so what's the first line again? They are the DM, their world, their rules. Their word overrides everything. Ooh, uh, I would say that's a talk and listen to your players situation. That if that's the way you feel, you should be writing a novel and not playing an interactive <laughs> role play game. <laughs> with other individuals. I think I'm very similar to that. I think the twist is, I think there are some players out there that would very much like that in the game, mm -hmm. but you need to know that that's your player group. Right. And even if it's the, the buddies, if it's your ride or die crew, as I was actually, mm -hmm. especially if it's your ride or die crew, mm -hmm. you should establish that really early on. Like, look, you either, you have to listen to me or you just have to trust me or just, there's a there's a half to element here of my word is the final word and we're we're going to agree on it. Yeah. And and that whole trust thing plays into it too. Yeah. Like we've said if you don't trust your game master or you can't trust your game master, then yeah, it probably isn't the game for you. And oh, you know, or they aren't the game master for you. Not not maybe come back and play vampire with someone else <laughs> yeah well i'm thinking like i totally blew the rules for um flaming sphere mm. in our sunday games i we were when we first started playing it was like oh you drop it and i was skimming through the the effects like oh it does 2d6 of damage save on save and or save for half and then we a couple like sessions and I, I look closer and went oh wait a minute it's if they start end their turn mm -hmm. in the flaming sphere so they get a whole turn to get out of that thing Right. before they take damage oh that's that's a little different but up until then it'd be like hey the game is going this is the way he's ruling it everyone's having a good time and it gets into that i'm sure a couple of times adam has wanted to argue with me but gone yeah we're all having fun 
Mm -hmm. It's this isn't the place to have to have that conversation. Let's just keep having fun. Right. But he also trusts me. Yeah. To keep having fun. Yeah. So that's a, it's definitely if the if the game is good, you know, I always say, you know, did did everyone seem to have a good time? Did they come back the next week? You're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if you're going to run a game where you are more referee mm -hmm. than storytelling coach, mm -hmm. then run it. But just kind of tell people this is a this is a tactical turn based RPG mm -hmm. where I am going to be refereeing what I believe going in are fair combats. Yes. Um, and maybe give yourself an out to say, you know, if it seems like this combat is not fair, this is the mechanism we're going to use for you to call a timeout and right. say, can we consult the books to make sure this is what Watsi suggested and appropriate <laughs> challenges? You know, can we just, you know, but I also think if you're going to do that, you run the risk of your player saying, well, I want to see you keep track of monster hit points. I want to see the monster rolls. I want to see, you know, because that's the game you're running. Right. You're running. Yeah. yeah more of a board game right yep rolls in the open let's do this yeah um which is fine if that's what you want to play I mean, i'm not gonna if you want to pay for your dm i'm not gonna judge you for that if that's what you want to roll and, and everyone's happy with it by all means yep i just don't think this person's very happy with it <laughs> no <laughs> all right ne next up Giving him advice. Next bit on the on the meme. I can't see it. So. Oh yes, this is a group activity, but they're the ones creating something for you. I think we kind of hit that one pretty hard already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pretty much did. Uh, to recap, it was more. Uh, I think uh, what we said was, you know, yeah, they. It's the 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 my precious story element kind of thing where just if you're playing the game play the game and no contact with the players ever you know <laughs> nothing ever survives i also think if you're gonna drop the i made this for you you should mm -hmm. like it yeah and and you're gonna use it as a weapon against people maybe stop making it right go write a book <laughs> yeah or like just say look i i can't dm anymore it's too much work for me it's it's too stressful for me someone else has mm -hmm. to do it and yep. if everyone goes, well, none of us want to say, you know what? Let's let's take out the Ravenloft uh, box board game and let's all try to kill Strahd. Right. Like there, no one has to create anything. Right. Yep. It's all there. Pull, Temple pull of Elemental box, Evil. Pull a box every week. And, yeah. And go. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. And let's be honest. There's the, there's what? Eight adventures per Dungeons and Dragons box game. Mm -hmm. And so and there's what? Seven of those. Yeah, there's got to be, there's at least a half dozen. <laughs> so that's that's a full year if you never yeah. repeat a scenario. Yeah. So don't give me this, oh, you know, somebody, no, if you don't, can't, if nobody can agree. Okay, never feel like you can't talk to them, but if you feel the need to argue the decision, walk away. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a talk after the game situation, not just... Uh, to, uh, shove away from the table and just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just think that's just some melodrama thrown in on the on the end of that one. <laughs> I also think, like, okay, so I'm I'm picturing some moments in my gaming life where my advice would be, if the players want to argue it right now, theoretically, if assuming we're adults, you're mm -hmm. gaming with adults, something is going on that they're not letting go of. Mm -hmm you should probably stop and talk about it. Right. Like that's my advice. Like, look, if they're still arguing your decision mid game, this is important. Yeah. They're giving up their game time to argue this point with you. Either they feel you, they really do disagree with you. They feel you're not being fair. They feel that in their tactical game, there's cheating going on. Maybe, but yep. maybe I wouldn't say, well, I said we, Maybe we should all walk away for a minute. Let's shut down the game <laughs> to have that conversation. Like, what's going on here that you're not okay with the fact that I ruled everything mm -hmm. still takes 2d6 damage in the flaming sphere right now? Why is this such a sticking point? Yeah. What's going on that you really feel it critical that we stop the game to argue? Let's just stop the game and figure out what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, if it's a if it's not a if it's not a uh, an acceptable situation to hey 
can we after game finish this up because you know we've we've only got two hours and there's four other people at this table Mm -hmm. you know unless unless it's going to impede the rest of the game for very long let's let's put a, a i like the term put a pin in it and we will we will talk about this the second the session is done if yeah. you want <laughs> and if you can't then everyone should agree this is obviously a big deal let's stop and talk about it yep. nobody should nobody should just walk away right right in theory and then the last uh, one is that online resources including possibly hiring someone to run your games yeah um and I do think they're not wrong. I think if people really are having a hard time working with a DM, it's okay to say, look, this isn't the table for me. Let's use some of these online resources to find a game that I'm going to fit into better. Yeah. But I also feel like that's, here's my advice. Ask yourself why you're gaming with these people. Mm-hmm. Because more than likely they matter to you. Right. And telling them that they're free to go find somebody else is kind of the the relationship equivalent of, well, you know what? Obviously, I'm not good enough for you. You should go find a different boyfriend. Mm. And I can't think of any time in my relationships I've said that to somebody and legitimately meant it. <laughs> right. Or if I did, I was in a bad place when I said it. Yeah. And and I needed to, maybe I needed her to walk away from me so I could get into a better place. Right. Yeah. It definitely sounds like a, a situational situation where if it cannot be agreed upon, you definitely have to pick up your dice and, and move along. And, oh. and, and, and it's so sometimes you have to fire a player, too. I mean, it just in that they will will flip that on the on its on its lid there back and forth. Sometimes you got to fire your DM, and sometimes you got to fire a player. There, there's something not working at the table. You know, Brandon just hates Dave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, otherwise, the game itself will die. Like I said, I had a player who stood up, and you know out of character said if you get us killed i will bleeping kill you <laughs> as a, i'm like this game is over yep done we're never coming back to this this is yep. you just killed this game that if if you feel that deeply about this i i am a little bit uh um flattered because obviously the storyline had you hooked in and and you know really really feeling the emotions but if you're actually in real life threatening another player mm-mm, done no more not a mouse <laughs> yep i hear you on that so that's so we've got some advice now yep that is an awesome place to wrap up what's your what's the next time we're going to find you online Next time online is Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time over on Indoor Adventures, where I will be playing uh, Cody Johnson, uh, (laughs) superhero with uh, uh, Shazam superpower type uh, things where he's got a a magic shield and armor and he looks like a Roman centurion. Oh, cool. Yeah. Artwork is coming up soon. We've got previews of it. So this week, the artwork will be out. That's fun. I'm I'm a little jealous on that front. I still get a lot of mileage on my Hero Forge. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's the same artist who's going to be working for us, so you'll get oh. a, a preview of uh, of what she's done. Uh, oh, so. it's um the one who does Danae, a lot of the art Danae, over there. DanaeKeener.com. DanaeKeener.com. <laughs> that is definitely a website we should mention. Then I didn't want to didn't want to not get it right, but DanaeKeener.com provides amazing artwork and. And, and Danae Keener of DanaeKeener.com is an amazing individual. Um, wait, what was the website again? Uh, DanaeKeener.com. Okay, which is where we find Danae Keener of DanaeKeener.com. <laughs> anybody, tra- anybody who goes to over to Indoor Adventure, you'll get that joke. I, um. I suddenly don't feel so guilty about our current arrangement. Because I'm like, yep. yeah, I think we got it covered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, she's she's brilliant. I love her stuff. Um, so that's cool. Um, my next is going to be probably Friday night. <laughs> Maybe. Um, we'll have to see. Cause my next real major scheduled event will be Sunday night's game again. When Streaming. we come back in for the, the D and D game. 
And nice. they get to go. They get to chase down the woman that escaped the zombies. Ah. She, she clearly summoned them. She clearly lost control of them. <laughs> and she was, and she was not afraid to use command mm. on the party so she could escape and leave them oh. to the zombies. Okay. Well, that'll be um, tense <laughs> if they ever find her. Right. Right. They, they've decided it's more fun to loot her stuff than they go chasing after her. So we'll see if they can, <laughs> if they can find her trail. Um, we'll have to see how that pans out. I have, I have ideas. Awesome. So, okay. Well, that's awesome. We'll be back next week. We don't have a topic for next week yet. So if you think of a topic you'd like to share with us, we, um, first of all, we don't yet have a mailbag segment because we don't have any mail yet, but we will soon because we are getting bigger. Yep. Um, but you can always shoot an email to, I'm double checking the email address name because I had to make a special Gmail account just for just for the podcast <laughs> so you can shoot an email to oldtimer tavern at gmail.com nice. nice i awesome. don't know how we got that yeah i don't either i don't got, either we got oldtimer tavern at gmail.com <laughs> if you have an idea for a show we're happy to take it on um you can also send uh find us on the twitters you can find us on my stream which is twitch at twitch.tv slash lantern noir graybeard tavern of graybeard tavern is also on twitch on sundays and <laughs> indoor uh, adventures tw twitter is also that's my same handle there so you can always hit me up on twitter uh i'm trying to be more uh more proactive and hi hints and tips and little bits of advice so you know it's check me stuff. out there okay parting word parting word play games roll dice have fun and remember the coronavirus has advantage <laughs> wear your mask for your con saves and please, above all else, try to stay safe.